5.1b, Convert Units, Multi-Step Conversions. If we find that we do not have the correct conversion factor, we can always convert using several conversion factors. To do this, we kind of go about it in a stepwise manner, where we use the first piece we have and then continue on. Let's look at example one. It asks, 365 grams equals blank pounds. If we look at our conversion table and we see that we do not have any conversions of grams to pounds, we can then see that we do have conversions for grams to kilograms. We see that there are 1,000 grams equaling one kilogram. We can also see that there is a further conversion in which we can change kilograms to pounds. That conversion being that one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. Using these two conversions, we therefore can get from grams to pounds. Let's look at how the math is done. Remember, you must start by writing down what you have or the 365 grams. Remember, if there's not a second unit, you put it over one. We now are going to multiply this by our first conversion. Our first conversion must include grams because we have to get rid of the unit we have. To do this, we look at our first conversion factor. We see that 1,000 grams equals one kilogram. We determine that we would like to put the grams on the bottom. This way, they can reduce diagonally. We therefore will put kilograms in the numerator. We now need to put the numbers that are associated with them, that there are 1,000 grams equaling one kilogram. We can now reduce the grams, but we have kilograms, which is not what we were looking for. So we must continue. In the next conversion, we see that we have one for kilograms to pounds. We put the kilograms in the denominator because we would like them to reduce. We therefore put pounds in the numerator and then write in their associated numbers, 2.2 pounds and one kilogram. We can now reduce the units on the kilograms and we find that we have found pounds, which was what we were looking for. At this point, we can now multiply all of the numerators and all of the denominators. When we multiply all of the numerators together, we get 803 pounds and we multiply all of the denominators and we get 1,000. When we divide, we get an answer that is 0 .0, 0 0.0803 pounds. This tells us that in 365 grams, there is 0 0.803 pounds. Example two asks us to convert gallons to cups. Since we do not have a conversion that will convert it straight from gallons to cups, we must do multiple steps. We can see on our table that we were given that there are two cups equals one pint. We also see that there are two pints in one quart. Also, there are four quarts in one gallon. As you can see from this, we have many conversions and we must have to figure out how we can get from the gallons to the cups. We can start by just writing down what we have in that we have five gallons. We can put this over one we now will have to multiply the first conversion factor. The only thing we can use is something that has gallons. As you can see from the third one, it has that one gallon is four quarts. This means we would need to use this one first. Putting gallons in the denominator so that they are diagonal and can be reduced, and then putting quarts in the denominator, numerator. 
we place a 4 next to the quarts and a 1 next to the gallons. We can now reduce the gallons out. As you can see, we now have quarts and we were looking for cups, so we must continue. Next, we see we have quarts, so the only thing we can use is something that says quarts. Only the second example has quarts, as the third example would get us back to gallons and that would be unhelpful. So we will use the second example and place the quarts in the denominator so that it will reduce and the points in the numerator. We now place the numbers that correspond and we can see that we can reduce the quarts and we have pints. Once again, we were looking for cups, so we need to continue. Our last conversion factor has pints converting to cups. Once again, it would not be helpful to use the second one as converting pints back to quarts would be a reversal of the step we just completed. Therefore, we multiply by the next conversion factor in which there are two cups per one pint. As you can see, the pints now reduce and we are left with cups, which was what we were looking for. At this point, we may now multiply across on all of the numerators and all of the denominators. Since the denominator will just be a 1, it is unnecessary to write it. The numerator, when multiplied together, will give us 80. We therefore have 80 cups. This tells us that in 5 gallons, there are 80 cups. Remember that when you're doing conversions, and if you happen to not find a conversion factor for a particular item, you may need to use multiple or several conversion factors. Keep in mind, you must always line up your conversion factor so that the units will reduce.